Hello, guys. Heavy things lightly. New branding. We're here. Buck Johnson's coming on from Counterflow, formerly Death to Tire. This guy, interesting conversation about thresholds, about what happens to your heart when your mind starts to change and vice versa. Buck Johnson today. Also, hey guys, Symbolic Worlds. You're looking at the MC slash host guy. Great speakers, Martin Shaw, Jonathan Pajot, Father Stephen DeYoung, February 29th down in Tarpon Springs. Go get your tickets. Let's go. Let's do it. We're doing two dinners there. Well, one for sure, Saturday night, where everybody who wants to go is invited, and we'll throw a Supra. That's right. Guys, today on Heavy Things Lightly, this is the music of Greg Gilbertson. What's up, Buck? So... My friend Counter from Counterflow. Dude, you're looking good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I didn't specifically know if I was looking good, but thank you. <laughs> but I'm Tell us about good. your t-shirt. What's happening there? This, how beautiful is That's this? Intense. Softener of evil hearts. This is one of my favorite um, icons of the Theotokos. That's so beautiful. And... Uh, yeah, a, a guy I know up in, actually, we were just talking about Denton. <laughs> I believe he's up there as well. And uh, he makes these shirts that are Orthodox style shirts with an aesthetic that I like. He's kind of an old heavy metal. I know who guy he is. As a, I think you I do? do? It's the, the company's called, I'm giving him free plugs. I paid for this know, shirt, man. but the company's called 13th Vigil. 13th Vigil. I went to that yeah. parish, St. Maximus, the OCA parish up there. That was intense. I like okay. that place. I don't okay. know if it's anyway. The shirt, so good. You're rocking that out. I, you know, I came. I'm just a pagan. I'm wearing a Knicks hat. That's all I got. Very nice. You're not judging yeah. me for that, are you? A little bit. No, I actually, I was. I didn't tell you. I should have, but I thought it looked cool when you popped on the screen. Yeah, I got it in New York. Like it's. A, You're a big sports yeah, fan. Yeah, what's a real thing? I don't know. It's the athleticism. It's something about expertise. It's something about yes, I climbing agree. the ladder, you know, and not stopping. Mm -hmm. No matter how much talent a lot of these guys were given, they still had to they had to ball it out. They had to like. There's plenty of guys with the same talent that didn't do what they did. There's something beautiful about that. I like it. That's yeah. That's why I love it because I love the NFL. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, at a, they're all basically a very similar level of talent, but when one like to make the Pro Bowl or the Super Bowl, like when people edge out the other ones, it's like this extra yeah. thing that most men don't have. So it's beautiful I know. to watch. And opinion. I think it's just the easiest way to understand all the spiritual journeys, all the all the spiritual ladders that we have to climb. That, they sort of flesh it out in body. And I'm not trying to say they're they're inclined toward spiritual goodness. I'm just trying to say that what they're doing with their right. bodies at a lot of levels, I think we're called to do with our souls. And well, St. Paul, yeah. I mean, it's not like we're like breaking ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? But St. Paul kind of yes. talked about these things. But so you you do counterflow, but you used to do something called death to tyrants. So you you're mm -hmm. you're a well known Talk about interesting stuff, guy, and with great intrigue and a lot of great guests too. I like your pod for you get good guests. So, but it wasn't always counterflow. So, what happened? Like, how did it not? What what happened to Death to Tyrants? And what was that? So, Death to Tyrants was uh, it was like a strident, strictly anarcho-capitalist political libertarian podcast, which is what I was um, into. I was an atheist, sadly enough, and I still was an atheist even when I did the rebranding to call it Counterflow. I, uh, I, I merged, I, I became part of a podcast network of sorts with a, with a guy, and he was the one that said, we got to change it. Well, he actually said, you can keep Death to Tyrants, but on this network, we're going to do something else because that's kind of limits you that puts a ceiling mm -hmm. on you with this, oh, I'm an ANCAP guy. And he was actually right because even in my circles, there were a few people I asked to come on the show. They didn't specifically say I'm not coming on because of the names a little bit 
hardcore, but I know that, that I found through other channels that was the yeah. reason. So I told the gentleman on the network, I said, you know what? I don't want it. It's too much work to do two separate shows. I was already thinking about this name being a little bit uh, limiting for me. So let's change it and just keep the same. This is getting into the weeds, but the RSS feed or whatnot, podcasters will understand what I'm talking about. So you don't lose the audience that you already had. Guess what? So I switched to Counterflow. We're doing this right now. I know exactly what you're talking about. We went from why are we talking about rabbits to heavy things lightly mm -hmm. because of the sub stack and all these other media streams. That. That's interesting. But uh, mm -hmm. but the the ethos and the eros was the same. The desires were the same to tell the same stories or to tell do the same interviews with Counterflow. Similar. I started. I wanted to expand a little bit, and I was kind of. I didn't know exactly where I wanted to expand it to, but I was already becoming less quote unquote libertarian than mm -hmm. I had been, and then. When the events of 2020 rolled out, I was getting far away from libertarianism because for a long time I had this thought, if I can just get the message out to people, especially, I, you know, I'm a musician and then I thought all of my kind of left leaning musician friends, if they just hear these interviews with these brilliant scholars, they'll understand like liberty and freedom. That's, that's what everyone naturally wants. And then the events of 2020 happened and you would see regular human beings basically working for free as arms of the state <laughs> you know he's bucks going to a gathering of more than five people these weird ant caps are having these parties arrest them right. you know i i saw friends calling for drones uh to and then uh police presence if people went outside their house and then it hit me like wait a second we're just one little scare away from people not caring a, about liberty at all wow and so, uh, yeah, I started shying away from that. We were actually, me and some other podcasters were at a group that was labeled as post-libertarians. Um, sometimes people use that as a derogatory term that sometimes they still do. And then others kind of made the journey with us. We had a large enough following amongst several of us that um, it actually caused a lot of waves. People within the LP, you know, were trying to, convince us to not be airing out these grievances on really? podcasts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got more than one um, angry voicemail and call from people within that libertarian party. Um, but, you know, it's like, would you say, wait a second, would you say during your adherence to libertarianism, I like the ism on there because I think that's, it's an appropriate way to understand it. Would you say if there's 10 of you in a room that are believers, how many would say that they had a soul? Ooh, that's a great question. I would say less than half. Because yeah. I bent toward libertarianism after my, I did a lot of work overseas as a young, I was pretty lefty to be perfectly honest for a long time. Uh, and I would bump into libertarians, but I always thought there was a soul and like Jesus was cool somehow. And, but libertarians used to bum me out because they would go so hard on freedom and then have no theology of the soul. It was kind of nuts. Like what, like freedom to like, just move my body around. Like, it's kind of weird. Yep. That was me. That was me. Really? You know, I was an atheist. I was reading Christopher Hitchens and, uh, you know, following Bill Maher, even though we weren't politically aligned, I thought I was aligned with Bill Maher on the atheist stuff. And I thought uh, the soul kind of discussion was fake. And, you know, it it's kind of makes me cringe at my old former self at this point. But yeah, I was, I was that way. A lot of libertarians look up to, they hold liberty as the highest right. value. Or men like Murray Rothbard or women like Ayn Rand. And they don't realize it while on the one hand they're mocking Christianity. And it's like... There's everyone has a God shaped hole in their heart. Now it's just, what do you fill it with? And they, they fill it with this chase of Liberty being the highest value. And uh, yeah, it's sad. So were you aware of that sad part or it took the, the pandemic no. to sort of say, wait a minute, that holes, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty empty. 
like it never got filled with much. Oh, how did you said the pandemic, but then was it a personal moment or, or what happened? Cause now you're doing counterflows like, like it's like cool hip orthodoxy. Like I love it, but something, something else happened other than just the pandemic. There was a, you must've bumped into somebody. I did. You you mean on discovering yeah, Christ? Yeah, like something else was going on than just a political like reevaluation, right? That's true. Yeah, I had open at least opened my mind at the time to Christianity, although you know I was calling myself at the end agnostic mm -hmm. rather than atheist. Uh, but it still wasn't for me. And I spoke with a gentleman that goes by Cyprian now. It used to go by Vin Armani. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, and our friend Cyprian. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've been on the royal path. I love yes. Cyprian. Me too. We were we had already been friends through my show, discussing political stuff. And during the twenty year of twenty twenty, after things went down, I had him on for some probably to discuss those things. I can't actually remember, but because I did find him very articulate and prescient on events that were unfolding. He was very good at kind of seeing how things were going to roll out. You know, he moved to Saipan in February or March of 2020 because he saw the writing on the walls. He was in California. He knew what was going to happen. And after the, the recording, I was chatting with him and I said, you sure see things pretty, pretty clearly and deeper than a lot of others. And he said, he said, bro, if you're looking at all these events through a materialist lens and not spiritual, you've lost the plot. You are going to be totally lost on everything that's unfolding. And I said, well, you keep talking about orthodoxy. That's interesting because I'm not real familiar with it, but I'm open to this idea. What, how do I research this? And he said, buy this book on Amazon by Father, Spirit, uh, uh, Father Seraphim Rose. Mm -hmm called God's revelation to the human heart. All right, cool. Got off with him. Click, 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 boom, order the book. And at that moment, also during this time, so crazy, I discovered that in my town of 13,000 people, church is everywhere, but it's, it's in Texas. It's small town, Texas. So it's right. Baptist, Methodist, Catholic. There's a Russian Orthodox church here. I could not what? believe it. And I said, well, that's fascinating. So I would drive by it and just check it out. And I thought, mm, they're, they're going to think I look weird. <laughs> you know, I'm covered in ink. I'm kind of a bigger guy. And I, I don't want to, they're going to think I'm some sort of weird thread or a freak. I didn't know anything about orthodoxy, right? And so I kept driving by it and I'm like, nah. So then the book from Father Seraphim comes in the mail. I let it sit for a few weeks. And then I read it and it was like, oh. boom. I could not believe what I was reading. I actually remember feeling a warmth and like tingling in my chest as I read it. God. And also then this gentleman that followed my show reached out on Twitter and DM'd me and said, Hey, I heard you say on one of the shows that you live in Lockhart. I go to an Orthodox church in Lockhart. I'd like to invite you. And You're I was like, kidding. That's the what? little church. Yep. And I said, wait a second. Who, this guy had like an avatar that wasn't him. You know, some of these, guys on Twitter. And I said, wait a sec, who, who is this? Where do you live in Lockhart? Let's get a drink. And he said, no, I actually travel in about an hour. Uh, but I just want you. And I said, weird. I've been driving by that church and I just got this book from father Sarah from Rose. And he said, well, there's an icon of father Sarah from in that church. Um, and he said, trust me, the fact that you're reading that and you're, and that I happen to reach out to you and that you live there, these are, these aren't coincidences. And at the time, of course, I was like, yes, they are. This is weird. And so that's kind of Isn't what got it funny, me in, Even in, in the, the phraseology door. right there. Yes, they are. They are two acquaintances. This is weird. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought, I thought they were, right. I thought they were just luck ups. Why would it, yeah. why would it be right. weird if it's, you see, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it either is or it isn't. I, I know I'm the same way. Even now I'm 27 years Orthodox. I'll be like, well, that's weird. No, it's not weird, dude. It's <laughs> It's, it's not weird at all. Reality emerging, and you should snap out of it. Uh, so then, okay, yeah, and you know what? I think when you scratch, really just the threshold idea of moving from one thing to another. If you ever notice, I, I really believe this. It's always a person. So like Cyprian's one of those people. 
for, for me, the person was this woman I was pursuing who said, I'll meet you at this Orthodox church in California. This is before I was, I knew my wow. wife and, 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 and she was just this Orthodox person who was going to church and I found her, you know, I was, I was, I wanted romance. So her personhood brought me to stand in, in that Green Street church and then get embarrassed by a babushka who was like, stand up. Cause I sat down, I'm like, I'm like 28 yeah. and like, you know, athletic. And then I just come in and get tired in like two minutes and then sat down. <laughs> <laughs> right. She yelled at me. But my, my point is, is all of my ideas about what was right or wrong, well, they're fine. Sometimes they're motivators, but it's people. They, mm -hmm. they move you like, because they are filled with, mm -hmm. they're filled with the stuff of movement, like, you know, Eros and all that. So, Okay, then mm -hmm. this is cool. So then as you're becoming aware of the church and then you're getting involved, you still are, you know, a big podcast guy. So you had mm -hmm. to switch it over, right? You, did, did you, what did you start to do? Change the vocab? Was it a makeover in your heart that ended up in your mouth, like with words or how did it look? That's a very good way to put it. It wasn't even like a a voluntary, let's say, or a purposeful decision where, you know, I have a producer, he's actually, he was very happy to see this. He's a uh, Protestant, but very into his church and whatnot. And we would have discussions and he would try to kind of, well, just be open to some thoughts and whatnot. And it wasn't a decision where I thought, okay, I'm becoming Orthodox. Therefore my podcast is becoming Orthodox. It's always been, my show has been things that I find interesting, things that I want to learn about, things that I want to kind of ideas to get out there, uh, for, for my audience. So it just kind of happened naturally as my journey. I used to hate the term journey, but it is, it I get is it, what though. it is I, as I my journey, too, but I get it. It's like, it's, it's, it works. Yeah. It works. Cause it's, it really is that. And so as that unfolded, uh, that my podcast just kind of followed as I do. Like, I don't like, it's not fake or there's nothing where I'm trying to put on a persona. It's just, is me talking to people. And so as I discovered orthodoxy and got deeper and deeper, these are the people that I wanted to talk to. I these see. are the ideas and the stuff that I found fascinating. So it is neat though. I've had, I can't tell you countless people reach out and say that they've made the same um, journey because of my show they, like I was I used to be a libertarian and I kept listening every week and now I'm getting baptized uh, in another Orthodox church. In fact, one of my audio producers who's now uh, baptized, he said he was hardcore libertarian. And he said, when you first started getting these like father turbo or these ideas that, that you're discussing on your show, I thought Buck's lost his <laughs> damn mind. <laughs> and here I, he said, here I am getting baptized. So that's what Martin cool. Shaw said when we talked last week or however long it was he, he was out last week with us he was like people were looking at me like it was crazy like and and he lost friends oh yes that but, happened you know part part i did i i i i went on the journey uh in the 90s so i would argue that it was more weird um however yep. i had had all this time overseas and What's weird in the places where we work is if you don't talk about God, then you can actually get in trouble. What I mean is they don't trust you. Like, really? Like, so you just don't talk about that? That's one of the great gaps when um, Westerners try to do aid projects is they really do them as if it's the entirety of the project is engineering. <laughs> and, mm. and the locals keep waiting for the spiritual conversation. And of course, like, you know, the white mm -hmm. people will pray with them. Because they're going to do the prayer service, you know, at the end of the bridge project or whatever. And the white people will all pray with them. But it's super uncomfortable, you know. It's like all these like super secular like Dutch and French people sitting together with like going, when is this going to get over? And they smell it out. All the local people are like, mm -hmm. eh, these people have a weird way of thankfulness or gratitude. And and mm -hmm. I think. I think that's the great divide, which is, of course, what this podcast is about at some point. And so did you find yourself? Well, let's just talk about it. Politically, one way to think of stuff is you hold a position. I actually like the idea of like, I'm, I'm 
if you guys are listening with audio, I'm holding a pen on video. I, I hold a position. The position has its own phenomenology. Like it seems to exist independent of my holding it. And so I like, I hold the position on abortion. I hold a position. Can you even talk like that anymore? Does it work like that? Now that you're. I don't. Yeah, that is weird because I've had people say, well, are you still a libertarian? What are your right, politics? Right, right. And it's like, mm, I don't really have a label for it. My, my worldview is orthodox. I'm trying to fit. I'm, I'm trying to learn the orthodox worldview. You can't say like, oh, I've mastered it. I, I have the orthodox worldview and this, 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 you know, it's an ongoing thing. It's like a friend of mine, father Zachariah Lynch said, and this is stuck with me because I see it. He said, when you was Protestant, he felt like he was kind of navigating in the, in a shallow depths of a, of a kid pool. And when he became Orthodox, it felt like someone took him over the ocean and dropped him off. And they're like, all right, swim. And he's like, it's never ending. That's good. And so it is that way in, in a sense. And um, so I don't, yeah, the political positions to hold them. I see more um, politics as one manifestation of the spiritual warfare that's going on. And so that that's kind of how I view it at this point. It, of course, I have political positions, right? I'm, I'm pro-life or um, I'm anti-war for the most part. So there's, that's there, but it's not, it's not um, what fills my mind. And when I wake up thinking about uh, like, it so your be. voice, if you guys listen to what book you do, what I do, and I think it's good. When you said, of course I have political position, this was like a diminution of the idea. Like if I have to tell you them, I'll tell you them. I find that's really endemic to a spiritual mindset, which is like, okay, are you going to pin me down? Should we have passed the border crossing thing that happened this week? If you pin me down, I'll have it with you. But what I find with a lot of my, I have a lot of secular friends. They love that space. I can only stay in that space for like a minute and I just got to get out. I want to go like, okay, what's a border? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> hold on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the border of Palestine and Israel. Okay. Hold on a minute. What's a Palestinian? Like then right away, everyone's like boring or, or, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for that. Are you thankful that this happened to you? Or do you, do you feel like you lost an, no, an I edge love in the world? No, I think I've gained a better perspective. Uh, sometimes sitting in the strictly materialist political realm is uh, not very fulfilling, <laughs> I would say. And, and even if this with this stuff in Texas, I find it fascinating what's going on. And I just released an episode, Texas versus the regime. I, I'm even like, you know, here it's like, well, we can't allow all these cross these illegals crossing in here. And Texas is fighting the federal Biden regime. I'm fascinated by that aspect of it. It's like, okay, I get it. Yes, yeah, so it's over immigration. But aside from the immigration part of it, what's going on represents a broader historical landmark, in my opinion. Like the, a state's pushing right. back and saying no to the federal. Like that. Okay, it's it's over immigration. Got it. But just this act is is more of a bigger picture thing yeah. to me at this point. This is this is good. That's nicely put. I. Which is really the story of disintegration, Diabolos, which is the story of war. At some point, war is a breakdown, right, of, of, of humanity's ability to relate to the other as a spirit. And so, yes. And so, yeah, that's the real story. That's the one I bring into my little, you know, my text strings with these guys. And they spit it right back out. For better or worse, I mean, not, not every conversation. Look, I got a Nick's hat on, you know what I mean? It's like not every conversation is <laughs> that heavy. But if you don't do the heavy things, what what happens? I don't know. I don't know. I can, did, did, you, did you lose libertarian friends that, that didn't want the heavy things, that wanted you to s stick with the protocol? Um, Not necessarily for those reasons, no. If I lost – I don't think I lost, quote, unquote, lost libertarian friends – uh, one reason I would say is because I don't, I'm not pushing stuff on to people that are secular, right? I don't 
go to a gathering and and if i do it's libertarians are there they do ask me like so what's up with the orthodox mm -hmm. thing or the libertarian orthodox pipeline but i'm not like look bro don't talk to me if you're secular um so i think my general mannerism and and affect kind of helps helps that mm -hmm. situation i would say if i lost friends it would be that it's just i don't go to the same sort of functions anymore so it would be more of just a kind of a natural you know kind of dying off of certain aspects of my life N nothing like where it's direct like oh bucks are orthodox i'm tired of that stuff i, I don't hear it approach. anymore not so much i that. love that i know i see it that makes which is natural right You're, there's this different there's pull and push and I don't, I like the idea of being pulled into orthodoxy, but I don't like the idea of pushing people into it. I, I'm not good at that. Right. It's no, it's not a good thing. I, a, a reader that used to be at my church told me once, uh, when I was converting, he said, don't argue with people about this. He said, you can argue, you can't argue someone into heaven, but you can argue many people yeah, out. That's how it feels. And that, that's kind of stuck with my, you know, it's like, look, I've had people come to me. Well, what's my first step here? What should I do? Well, you should reach out to the priest and then go to the service. And then I've had some say, I'm, it's amazing how powerful Christ is because he really does scare people. And I've seen it so many times with people that are actually, their heart open to it. Oh, I don't know, man. It's, I went, kind of, things are kind of weird. I'm afraid if I become a catechumen, they keep telling me it's a really hard, it'll be a hard year. It was for me. And so you went through these things. I don't know if I'm ready for that. And it's, I always say, cool. Well, I'm, you know, it's not my job to push you into it. So when you do feel you're ready, I hope, you know, I hope you take advantage of that opportunity, but I think it's a very healthy step forward, but if you're not ready for it, don't do it. <laughs> uh, one of my dear friends who worked in uh, the field, first things, he was an inquirer and he went to a Georgian monk who could speak enough English. Um, he had not worked in Georgia. He had worked in Africa and he went to the, he was there in Georgia and he went to the monk and he said, I want to, I want to stay here and I want to be, become Orthodox. <laughs> it was actually the famous, there's a, it's a very famous spiritual father that he sings. He sang in front of the Pope. I don't know if, if anybody's seen that video, his name is Father Seraphim. Very famous. He sang in front of the Pope with this young girl singing these ancient Georgian tunes. But anyway, he told him, <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. He was like, no, but I want to become a Christian. He was like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> and he was like, well, I do. And he said, okay. Um, all right, two years, come to the church for two years, and then we'll talk about what comes next. <laughs> he was like, no, but like, what should I read and study? He goes, just, first of all, just come to church for two years. <laughs> then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Whoa, mm -hmm. that is like the opposite of Western Christianity. It's nuts. It is. Yes. Yeah. And, and father turbo has said it before, uh, on his show, the church doesn't need you. You need the church. Now, when you figure that out, uh, that's on your own timeline, but the church doesn't need you. That's okay. So do you have the thought as a Western minded, former libertarian trained in the scientific method? Do you have the thought like, Oh no, it's a missed opportunity. I do. You mean if someone doesn't, if someone goes to the church and then doesn't or, continue yeah, or, going? You know, they get the, the classic, everybody talks about the classic Orthodox cold shoulder where everyone's like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. <laughs> like, I always feel like, oh no, I want to have small talk with that person so they'll feel better about their moment here. I become that person. I do. Yes. Yes. And sometimes I, I, I'm hard on myself. If I see a new young man or woman uh, at, at coffee hour and that, and I have to leave or something and I think, man, I should have said something to that person. Uh, they're going to think that I was a jerk or something like that. And, or they'll think that yeah, it's a missed opportunity. Like they're, they're not going to come back now because I didn't say something to them. So yeah, I, I do have that feeling. I try to go up and shake hands and, and just talk to people uh, so at the coffee hour. Let's ask the question. Let's just investigate it together. I, I think it's a really relevant question, not just for Orthodox people, by the way. So is that a cultural thing? Um, Russians won't really do that. That's not a thing in Russia or Russian lands. Or Do, 
do you think that's a, just like a, a waspy thing that's happening? Or do you think it is a type of proper relationship to the stranger? Um, I don't, I'm really torn on this. Um, Maybe it's because, you know, in, in Texas, that's kind of a natural thing to do. If I, if I go to a bar and you, if I'm by myself and there's people sitting next to me, they just start talking to me. So I, it's, I don't know if that's strictly Texas, but it's my environment. It's what I'm used to, especially I'm in a small town of 13,000 people. So that's very common here It at H E B our, our, gro our local grocery store. I've had people to start chatting with me. So to be in a small, my parish is very small. I would say it's 600 square feet. Uh, it's, it's just unnatural not to do that. I see that at this point for us. I, I'm torn without throwing the Midwest, the entire Midwest under the bus. Um, I find Midwesterners are very much, Hey, very nice to meet you. Da, 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 da. It's like a duty. And then there's suspicion in the quiet, like there's suspicion in the quiet after space. Like, I don't know. I don't really like the way that guy, his clothes were weird. They're not, it's like an act of the moment in order to appear good. I'm not saying it's every mm -hmm. Midwesterner. Please don't hate me. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. there's something about the small talk. So my wife who grew up in Harlem in, in New York city, Russian friends that I have, they all smell this out and they take it as disingenuous. Not, not the other way around. I think there's some medium space. There's some, you know, halfway point where, there's a lot of small talk. You should probably avoid that. But also, we should talk to strangers. <laughs> oh, yes. It's in my parish. If there's a problem with this topic, it's, 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 the, <laughs> there is not enough small talk. It's like all of a sudden they're getting into like world history over in this corner. We're talking to these young men. Oh, now they're talking about the, the borders of certain countries. Now they're talking about monarchy. Right. And some guys just in there like, I was like, just want to talk about coffee. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I, I was wondering what that uh, was on your plate. <laughs> Can I sit so, here? <laughs> They're like, whatever, whatever. We don't have time. <laughs> yes. I, that, that, I like that. We could go on. I we want, I want to switch gears, but I, I find this really fascinating because, I mean, I think you could look at it as a silly conversation about etiquette, um, but human relationships are really complicated and how we meet our brother, like, how we the disposition the position of our soul i think it really matters because i don't like small talk on the other hand i'm sure i sure do want to know what what's going on with, with you i gotta find get there somehow mm -hmm. yeah i was recently in a monastery and i did tried small stock a uh, small talk with the monk this is a fact he read me man as in he gave it to me he was like inappropriate don't talk to me this way yeah really? man he was like really you're wasting our time together while we live together here on earth he was like I, you don't have to know where i'm from wow. you don't have to know what language i speak it was nuts it was fascinating and, and in the end i think he was calling me out for that small talking that that nature that character that's pretty weird yes that's gonna stick with me don't waste our time while we're here on earth with this. Wow. I'm telling you, Buck, that happened. The people around were like, whoa, he is lighting into you, which was okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this question. Um, there's something going on, right? Where everybody's having to choose between sort of um, like Palestine, Israel, globalism, um, you know, cultures of the global South versus cultures of the global North. You can say white versus black. There's these big divisions going on and you interview folks and talk about politics. So let me flip it around to you. Is there a position we should take when it comes to the conversation about who holds the power and who should hold the power? Is there one you, you take? Let's use Israel as a micro. I, I personally think it's a global. Con I think it's a, Israel and Palestine is not a conversation about Israel and Palestine. It, to me, it's a conversation about right. 
the powers that be in the, in, in the global north who understand capitalism as a tool for creating wealth slash power for themselves slash uh, ultimate scary stuff, tyranny. And I think Israel is a part of that conversation. And the Palestinians are part of the other one, which is like, we're going to stay tribal and just bomb each other if you don't agree and the yada yada. You can talk about decentralized versus decentralized, right? How do you do this? You talk about politics, so you don't get to get off the hook. How do you do it? What's your? Do you would you would you phrase that battle? Let's call it, for lack of a better term, is a civilization versus tribal. I like I like that. I I like it. That's our podcast. I like it. Old world, new world. It's. I define mm -hmm. myself differently than you. I define it by the blood of my father, and I know his name, and that's he leads me to my God. Versus, you know, we're all animals in the world trying to develop systems that make our lives better while we're here, something like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to be that one. Uh, that's the very libertarian materialist worldview yeah. versus let's say um, tribal old world. Stick with um, your people. We have souls. Yes. Uh, and, and you can see, I, I broadly would just call this more spiritual warfare and how it manifests itself. I think we can say the same thing in Ukraine right now with what's going on uh, with Russia. It's interesting, like these NATO organizations, right? They're they're always on. It's it's funny. I find myself against whatever they're doing. You know, it's pro Zelensky. Right. It's pro Israel, and but they're not. They're putting their reasons out there. Oh, it's for democracy. Oh, it's for caring about people. And if that's a very if you get one millimeter below the surface of all the talking points you find out never mind no it's not uh right now i i just read that tucker carlson is on the a kill list uh from the ukrainian government because he interviewed uh he's on the kill list wow. and it's like yeah that's an interesting version of democracy that we're funding i didn't know that was a thing and so and it's i didn't know it was so a thing to announce it, it. Uh, well, now, luckily, you know, there's drawbacks of social media and you see things you don't want to see and you, sh and you, there's a lot of propaganda and lies on social media, but it also helps uncover a lot of things, right? I, I think a lot of the stuff that happened in 2020 and 2021 without social media, there would probably be less of an awakening to some of the stuff that went down. That's a great conversation. So, that's a great, that's a rabbit hole that, that. We should go down another time. I agree. Yeah. I don't want to get you in trouble too. Those are, you have to skate and navigate around certain things very carefully if you're going to be on. YouTube. I know. And I am. And uh, we're just little fish. And although, do you know Alexander Dugan? That Yes. He was very close to coming on our show. <laughs> and I realized oh, that's a fact. Oh my gosh. That was that about a year amazing. and a half. It was before his daughter died or was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I... Some, a friend, some friends of mine just met with they him did. in Russia. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm allowed to say their names publicly because they're public. They're both public figures. Don't do it. But yes. I won't. That cat is saying, so in the end, I wanted to, even though I, I have some, his orthodoxy is very, very czarist old school. It's very fascinating mm -hmm. um, with some weird twists, but uh, I really wanted to do it. And then literally someone came and said, dude, th this might not be a great idea. And then right after that, his, his daughter was killed. And I was like, that's not, this is messy, man. What? You would have an amazing conversation. With I would him. love it. We had Vodolatskin on, the, the author of Loris. I don't yeah, know he wrote person. the book Loris, a novel about a holy fool in the 1200s in Russia. Oh, I highly cool. recommend okay. that book. L I'm L -A -U this down. R U S Loris. Um, okay. uh, literally, cool. probably one of the great novels of this of many centuries. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so, so we can talk about it, right? The sides, you know, all of us podcasters in this subculture, you know. Peugeot and Nicholas Kotar and all of us. And we can have positions on this. I'm coming to a point though, where I, I wonder 
to what end, you know? Like, if you're going to ask me, like, leave the Palestinians alone. I mean, I get it. They, 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 they fight underhandedly in the way that they try to strike. I, it's awful and evil. I get it all. I get it all. But to me, the it's an obvious case of David and Goliath. These aren't like hard concepts, you know. And um, right. But what does it benefit me to spend a lot of time in there uh, with words and thoughts? Does it benefit us? No, I, I I just want to get the basic concepts, if you will, out on my show. So I, because there's so much, to use a left wing term, misinformation, a propagandized term, misinformation on these things, on the basic yeah. narrative. And so I try to once this stuff went down in Israel, and you know you see it sadly, um, a lot of people on the Christian right. Well, we have to back Israel. It's like, why is that? Like, let's dig deeper into why these thoughts come up. Oh, because it's a holy land. Oh, where'd you get that from? And then you start digging. It's like, oh, John Nelson Darby. Oh, uh, these thoughts didn't come out to the eight, late 1800s or mid 1800s. Where did this? Then it's like, well, let's look into the book of Revelation. Wait, how do you? Well, let's look into the rapture. And, and, and you start kind of digging deeper. And it, it's like, that's why these political opinions have manifested themselves and why it, nothing Israel can do no wrong. And so it's like, wait a second, this was based on a heresy of sorts. Now let's dig into why that happened. And so that's what I like. And to you do. should, because what I mean to say is, is the political conversation is really necessary when it leads you down that road. And Correct. I, yep. I would listen to that, which I do when you do that. And I get a little tired of people who are like, don't talk politics. What I think they mean is, is the politics aren't the point of the conversation. And that's right. And I love that. And then the history is really essential. And I think all this is working. And tell me what you think about this. All this is where all of this, for instance, what you just said, I think many millions of people have gone down that uh, Orthodox, non-Orthodox doesn't matter. And they went like, Oh, Oh, the American lobby, these, oh, that's who. So I think this is all, the internet included, is all for the opportunity to be to be known to the divine reality as per the material reality. We're passing through the materiality of our existence to learn about the spiritual. And if we do it, if all this is seen as a gift, we can do it. And we, we the internet doesn't scare me that way, but I have to stay like, to get, I, I think about a rocket ship trying to leave orbit. You got to get on the ship, the rocket, but you can't let it blow apart when it's going through these conversations. It can't be that those become the price. Right. No, we're just going through this Correct. until we get, ah, now we're in, you know, now we can see clearly. And I like that rocket ship conversation. I just don't want to stay in it. I just, please, you know, like, ugh. Right. I picture it as like the, when I'm at the beach, the, the surface level like that's on Twitter or that so many people want to argue back and forth is like the white foam mm -hmm. on the water. And it's like, go in under that part and let's start getting to where the currents are actually forming. And, and that's the more interesting conversation. The why, the why? The why, why is this happening? Why, why is this the discussion right now? Let's get below the white foam and hit the undercurrent, the undertow. What's what's kind of swirling things up down below? I saw a picture of two dudes on the the new Apple. I what's it called? Osculus? No, that's the other one. There's a new Apple device that you put on your head and walk around and on your on your face and you see things. I don't even get it. So right now somebody's going, "How old is that guy?" You. Right now they're like, "Hey, that guy with the Knicks hat." is a dinosaur. I don't care guys. It's an Apple device that you can look at. You see, it's, it's like what, whatever the one that they put out from meta, whatever that thing is where you're in an alternate reality. Right. And I saw these two picture of these two guys having lunch together with their goggles on. <laughs> oh my Lord. So I bring that up because, okay, that's a beginning, <laughs> but that's just like, what does it do? What does it do? Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. Okay, but let's go a little bit further now. Now, why do you have them on at lunch again? It, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I get that there's cool stuff happening. I get it. But why are we doing this again? And then if they'll sit long enough for that conversation, I feel like maybe they still put it back on, but at least I know why I put this on my head. 
And I think it's a mm-hmm. scientific thing. It's, it's a what. It's always a what and how, what and how, what and how, what and how. And science has taught us to go what and how, what and how, what and how. But why is not one of those, you know, questions enough for me? No, it never is. And it's sad that we, as as a culture, we have moved so far away from actual truth and actual reality that it's like, let me get out of this craziness, this crazy world that I'm sitting in and let's put these things on that make it an alternate reality. It's like, dude, you're already in, in an alternate reality and that's why you're trying to escape it, but you're oh, going the wrong good, direction. Mark. You're right. There's an attempt at escape because they haven't yet come to the, yeah, they haven't been brought to the conversation about what this reality is. Oh, that's intense. That's right. Yeah, I'd want to escape that too. It's like, I would, yeah, I, I did want to escape it. That's why I found the church. Wow. And so maybe we do, a, let's go this direction for just a second. Cause I, let's just a couple, let's just talk for one more second because I don't want to, I don't want to hang up yet. Cause you're here and you're kind of like, I'm like a little baby podcaster compared to you. So here's a question. No. What makes for a good podcast? Oh man, that's a great question for me. And this is not me crafting my own. It's let's say it's when I I'm searching, um, below the surface discussions, uh, spiritual warfare discussions, you know, I, I should also preface this with you're a Knicks guy. I'm a Raiders guy. If we're talking surface level, I, I'd watch Raiders podcasts almost every day. That's a whole separate issue. But if we're talking something that's deeper than that, um, yeah, I, I, spiritual warfare, below surface mm-hmm. discussions, um, hearing information that I, I, I'm thirsty for on topics that I find fascinating. Generally, I mean that's kind of a broad sweeping it. answer, but that's what I would that's say. That's helpful. No, I go back and forth. I like the host or the guest that's vulnerable. And there's something about the podcast format, partly because it's just so easy. You know, I have to go to a studio, I have to get into a car and drive to a studio and get mic'd up and you just sort of turn it on. There's something informal that I think podcasts allow us to be vulnerable and like, whatever, man. And I love that. Now, my brother, who you Mm -hmm. know, and who's a, a serious internet person, he knows, he really prefers to have all the questions and all the answers like ready to go it's like a data download like i don't Mm -hmm. you don't he's yeah right he's like he's teaching and Mm -hmm. there's a real place for that like you don't even you didn't even know what i was going to ask you today we just we said "Eh, let's maybe go toward libertarianism um i didn't know in fact i didn't i purposefully didn't go back in the email thread to see what you said I, I don't know even if you said it, but I thought I just want to talk. But so there's I'm a not whole read, there's a whole cohort whatever. of people that would call this conversation lazy because we didn't you know, we didn't prep. I don't like the word prep because I did prep, but I didn't I didn't mm-hmm. outline the three parts of every question. And and I think for some people they find that lazy. I think that's a dying approach to life. I think that's the spreadsheet approach that really was that worked for, you know, since World War II, that let's organize, control, plan, execute. I think people are dying. Mm -hmm. They're tired of that. They want a little bit more of this vulnerable, let's let's relate. And I tend to like those podcasts Mm -hmm. and those podcasters. I do too. I'm a big fan of Tucker Carlson. And when I watch him do his thing, and he has no notes very often, and he's making these wonderful interviews and I sit and watch him like, boy, he's just, it's, it's like, he's brilliant and he's flowing a conver- the conversation is flowing at the same time. And I kind of admire that. Like, how does he do this so well? I think cause he believes. And, uh, I study people I like him. I think it starts with that vulnerability. I was like, I'm a believer in this and I really want to know, you know, those, I like them. I think I might be one. You're probably one too. I like the nerds who actually just want to know. And then you realize They have not been actually doing anything for the last 15 minutes, but trying to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And the vulnerability aspect of it for me is like 
there's a there's people much more intelligent than me that could be watching this they're like geez he's kind of <laughs> dumb you know it's like well i'm just me so I, i'm asking these questions because i want to know certain things and i'm hoping that that people listening also have similar that's questions. why you're good at at your job and that's that's the fact right there is because you don't have to be in front that's gorgeous man that's super gorgeous so thanks all right so people can find counterflow um we'll put it in the notes um we're like buddies now because i did your show a little while back you helped me to talk about our work um there's some more iterations mm -hmm. coming out we're starting to learn a lot about the beauty of hosting these tables they're becoming um they have their own energy and it's just because westerners they want something beautiful that doesn't that's not a product by that i mean a material product they and correct and that they just don't want to be sold just one more mechanism for making their life more convenient they want the harder thing <laughs> right and the table is hard because it's very very you know it's toasting in public and but there's something for you and i to do on that coming up because you have good business acumen and maybe we talk about stuff in another time if you'll have me back on and i'll have you back on for sure for sure yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I was watching another podcast the other night and someone referenced our conversation oh, good. in that show. And I was like, oh, that's that makes me happy. Cool. Yeah. yeah, dude, we don't know where things go. I will say this and then I'll ask you this and then maybe we're done. Uh, the weird things happen when you have a, a degree of a profile. Like, look, we don't have many. You guys got, you know, we're just little, but people communicate with you. And I find it amazing. Like I am, I don't, I'm not one of these people are like, Oh no, five more emails from these guys. I find them fascinating. I'm probably gonna run out of time at some point if I do my job. Well, how do you feel about your online relationships that have begun? Like, are you cynical about them or are they real to you? Oh, it's real. I love it. I, I've met so many wonderful people. I, yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, just it's weird when people I don't want to be an authority on anything except maybe the Raiders, <laughs> but I don't want to be an authority on stuff that's super deep because I'm not. So oftentimes it's like, Hey, you know, I could direct them to your brother or Hey, right. talk to a priest right. or father right. turbo. It's, I don't want to answer those deep questions, but just that people, you know, I've, I've, I've have phone conversations on a regular basis with people. I'd have zero contact with I if know. I didn't yeah, have a yeah. show. Me too, bro. Yeah. And that expertise cool. question is really important. That's uh, let's keep doing that where we're like, I'm not an ex I, I can tell you this. I'm an expert on cultural immersion, how that works, what the language learning looks like and how aid can, how it works like on the ground in, in quote, poor countries. You want to talk about that? I can do that as an expert, maybe the restaurant and this dinner. But after that, <laughs> take my theology or whatever the stupid thing I'm saying for a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Dude who loves you. I'll see you soon. Um, yeah, Buck Johnson, guys from Counterflow. Thanks for coming on. Beautiful. Thanks, John. Love it. All right, guys, that's Buck Johnson. I want to say something to Buck. Keep going. I love his podcast. It's very interesting. Get some characters on there. Uh, guys, check us out, www.first-things.org. Also, go check out Glassy Baby. Yeah. It's a company out west that does these magnificent candles. They're beautiful. We like green at first things. We've chosen green and they've chosen us to receive a little kickback every time people buy Glassy Baby. It comes back to us at first things. A percentage on your purchase. How about that? We are in their stable of wonder. When they do well, we do well. Glassy Baby. Check it out online. We'll put the link Love those guys. So much love to you. Lots coming up. Please consider becoming a monthly donor. And while you do that, I'll be out here trying to spread the word on first things. Much love. Peace out.